Good day to you. One topic, two parts. First part, getting this Harrison 140 lathe to cut threads at two teeth per inch. Second part, multi-start threading, discussion, metric, imperial, to make this. Two TPI, two start. Hope you enjoy it. Oh, and if you find my voice anywhere, let me know. After I put out that video on line boring a thread, which was just an experiment, I got a lot of very useful comments and I'm certain that I could make that technique work now. One of the comments said, the guy had got to cut a nut 2 TPI, the screw 2 inches diameter, the nut length 10 inches. Sounds like a real challenge. I think he said it was for a vice, so it must be a very big vice. But I misread it. I thought it said to start to TPI and it got me thinking and I thought well oh, wouldn't it be fun to do a to start to TPI thread as a practice exercise to build up my knowledge. And you might say well you know what's the big deal about that then? Well what if I said my lathe doesn't cut to TPI? The most coarsest, the coarsest thread I can do on my lathe is seven millimeters or four TPI. So I'd have to work out a way to cut two TPI. And then if I said, well, my lathe is metric, it's not imperial. So I can't use the dial to do the number of starts. I'd have to figure out a different way. So with those two things combined, it makes it quite a challenge. But I think I can do it. Now I've been doing a bit of thinking so I've done a bit of preparatory work but at this point I've not cut the thread. Let's see what we can do. If I fit the right change wheels this will give me 4 TPI. Left, left, right and the plunger in the first position. Now wouldn't it be great if I could just change the change wheels to give me 2 TPI by doubling the speed of this lead screw but I can tell you that's not possible. I'll show you why later. It just physically doesn't work. But maybe I can get two TPI in one of these other plunger positions or in any of other position of these levers in combination. Well, to work out if that's possible, I needed to create a spreadsheet and to do that, I needed to know the gearing within this gearbox for each of these plunger positions. Now I know the gearing on the change wheels because I can see what they are and work it out but I don't know all the gears in here but by knowing the gearing in any one position of the plunger I can work out the gearing across all positions of the plunger simply um, by proportions so what I did was I worked out the gearing in this gearbox for six millimeter pitch so we've got a six millimeter lead screw if we're cutting threads at six millimeter pitch, we know the gearing between the spindle and this lead screw must be one to one overall. We know the gearing of the change wheels because we can see what they are. We don't know what the gears are in this box, but we can work out at the six millimeter position what the end to end ratio is and therefore we know what the ratio is within the box. <clears throat> and by knowing that this is an imperial box, this bit is the old imperial box, we can work out the pitch or the gearing I should say for every one of these positions and these settings relative to what we've worked out for six millimeter. So by that we can build up a spreadsheet so we can do a little bit of playing around to work out what gears might give us two TPI in some other plunger position, another combination of the knobs. Hope that makes sense. One more piece in that puzzle so this is the old imperial box even though this is a metric lathe this knob was added to give more metric pitches and I know just from reading that that gives you a 5% gearing change so I think it's a 20 tooth gear and a 21 tooth gear that this lever will toggle between. I made the spreadsheet for this gearbox a long time ago and I put it on a laminated card so it was easy enough to read and I'm showing you the top left hand corner of that. If I try to show you the whole thing you won't be able to read it unless you're watching this on TV. 
So these are the two old knobs from the Imperial gearbox and this one is the knob that was added for the metric gearbox and you can see 1.05 I hope and 1 which is the ratio change from moving that knob left to right. Now each combination of these knobs is actually a doubler. So this here represents the most left plunger position for the two settings of the right hand knob. So for the imperial settings you don't use this at all but you can see 15 TPI 30 and 60 according to the doubler settings with these old imperial knobs if I can use that phrase. Now the point is I know the ratio behind every one of these boxes here even the blank boxes I know what the ratio is through the gearbox. So with a bit of modeling work with different change gears I might land on one which gives me two TPI and actually that is what's happened but it was quite a long job I will explain it. These are some of the standard gears that come with the lathe but with some in addition. So if you know the Harrison 140 lathe you know that to cut imperial threads you need a 40 and a 63. These are had made from eBay, Delrin, actually work surprisingly well but I had an idea to cut some in steel. So I bought a 55 tooth as a blank to make a 40 and a 77 to make a 63. Well in the end I didn't do it because these were good enough as it turned out but it does give me the 55 and the 77 to play with in addition to the standard gears. There are many gear combinations which are fine in theory on a spreadsheet but you can't actually put them into the machine in practice. Now here's a combination that will fit, it's non-standard, it's 50, 100, 120, 40 and it looked promising, the door shuts but when I put that into my spreadsheet it won't give me 2 TPI. So I stepped through all the combinations physically on the machine to find the ones that would physically fit and then plug those into my spreadsheet. This set of gears would allow me to cut 4 TPI. It's the set that we need for Imperial coarse threads. 50, 63, 80, 120. Now to get the overall ratio of a compound set like this you simply take first driver divided by first driven times second driver divided by second driven. So from that logic you can see the way in which to double the speed of that shaft relative to that shaft we can double a driver or we can half a driven. Well I can't double 50 because 100 wouldn't fit on there. I can't half 63 because I don't have a 31 and a half tooth gear. I can't double 80 because I don't have a 160 tooth gear and it wouldn't fit obviously. So the only option I would have that might work here is to half this 120 for a 60. But if I put the 60 on you'll see that physically it don't work. So we take off the 120 and we drop on the 60 So if I can get this gear train to line up, we're done. But it won't. If I drop that to there, I'm only going to do this roughly now. And then I loosen off this banjo and engage. I want to engage that 63 against this 50. And you'll see it don't work because this banjo plate is hitting the casing I think somewhere or up here now it's hitting up here before that 63 is engaged. You can see the gap there between the 50 and the 63 and whatever I try it's just never going to engage. I'd just like to address a point from a comment by a viewer saying that the 63 tooth gear doesn't give perfect imperial pitch on this lathe and they're absolutely right. I added an error row to my spreadsheet and you can see in this example here 7.5 TPI has an error of 0.012% but that level of error is only 1 in 8,333. So in other words if you were cutting an 8.3 inch nut 
you'd have an error of one thou over its length. Or you could say 2.5 hundredths of a millimeter over 200 millimeters. So I think it's close enough for what we want to do. If you're viewing this on a mobile, you won't be able to read this chart, but I just want to give you an impression by the colors. Now each of these rows here is for a different set of gears for the knobs in all the different positions. And these are all the plunger positions. And where you can see green is where we're close enough to the TPI that we want. And I, I say that broadly for a reason. Where we've got orange or this yellow, well, we could use it kind of in an emergency because here, although you can't read it, I can tell you that that is two TPI, but there's a 0.85% error. So that's too big, unless it was a very short nut, which is unlikely in an emergency it could be done. Why don't I just go for that one then? Because that does give me two TPI with an error of only 0.012%. Well, the answer is when I was doing this model, I didn't have the necessary gears. So I've had to buy a gear, a 70 tooth gear to give me this row. Well, how did I figure out that I needed a 70 tooth gear? Well, I didn't figure it out. I just looked at all the gears that were available to buy because I couldn't get two TPI accurately with the gears that I've got already. And 70 tooth just happened to be one that I tried pretty much at the beginning. And it was 40 pounds plus nine pounds delivery. So what I could have done is I could have simply used one of the other sets of gears uh, with the 0.85% error, told you it was two TPI, you wouldn't be any wiser. Um, and I'd have saved myself about 49 pounds. But the point is that when I put in the metric equivalent on this upper row here, I found that I was getting absolutely dead on metric threads. So you can't see to the left here, but I can tell you that with the 70 tooth gear, I can get a pitch of eight millimeters, 10 millimeters, and then maybe you can see 12 millimeters and 15 millimeters. Will I ever use it? I don't know, but I can get two teeth per inch to within 0.012%. So given that it was giving me one, two, three, four, five new pitches for the lathe, I thought it was worth buying the 70 tooth gear, but I had to do a check, a physical check first to see whether the gear would fit. This is how I figured out whether a 70 tooth gear would fit. Well, I've got a 77, which is the closest I have to a 70. And the gear train that I'm aiming for is 50, 70, 100, 60. With the 77 in, you can see there's not much clearance between this gear and this nut. So the question is, if I put the 70 on, if I bought it, would that hit this nut? Well, you can work out the size, the diameter of an imperial diametric pitch gear by taking the teeth, adding to and divided by the DP. Well, the diametric pitch of these is 14. And I worked out that I could just, just change the 70 tooth gear and that would just clear, this nut would just clear this. So with that, I bought it. And here it is. I hope you're still awake. This is a bit of a long story, isn't it? But I can't think of a way of making it shorter, not with the detail. 70 tooth gear. Let's pop that on. If I set the engagement correctly, this gear just clears the corners of this nut. But I've got to be careful. If I put that gear in too far, that will jam. So if I was going to run this, you know, for a long period of time, I might just take the corners off all three of these nuts to make sure that, you know, in whatever combination, the nuts will always clear this gear. So there you are for 49 pounds and a lot of thinking, we've got two TPI, but we do have a problem. Watch. <laughs> I thought I got away with this. That corner touches that. So if I was going to run it with this setup for any length of time, I'd cut away part of this door and I'd make a piece to give me a sort of a bump in that cover. But for the demonstration I'm going to do, 
all I'll do is pull in the micro switch and just keep my fingers out. If I start it up, you'll see all these whizzing round and the lead screw whizzing round too. Now, the half nuts are not engaged. This is only on 34 RPM. Scratch pass to test the TPI. It's looking good, isn't it? That'll do. Well, it looks good, doesn't it? But it's wrong because I didn't move the plunger. The plunger's still in the position for 4 TPI and I need it two holes further along. So what I've actually cut is 1.788 teeth per inch. We'll try again. I'll go over the same piece so as not to waste anything. Actually not the third hole, the second hole. Okay. Well I've set it a fraction deeper but it's going to be out of register with this one so it'll land wherever it lands. Here goes. I've made a mark here where the two pitches converge, so that's the starting point for both. If I set my calipers to two and a half inches, you can see it lines up with this one. So I'm happy that that is. 2 TPI there oh it's quite warm today isn't it I don't know what's gone wrong with the weather now we have 2 TPI I'm sorry it took a long time to explain that but I couldn't think of a quicker way to say it so we move on to look at cutting imperial multi-start threads on a metric lathe where we can't disengage the half nuts I've got some ideas but before that, my brain needs a rest. Well, I've found a way to do it, but it's been a bit tricky. It's been one of those things you think you understand how it'll work, and it's not quite how it seems. 